Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. That's right. It's time for the Eddie and Webby Podcast. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to bust out some theme song action for you. Check it out. The Eddie and Webby Show is the place to be. They're talking about beer and pickleball and technology. So if you didn't know, now you know. Because it's time for the Eddie and Webby Show. On today's episode, Eddie and Webby take the show on the road. This is the Eddie and Webby Podcast. Oh, hey, how's it going? This is Webby, not Eddie. And I'm Eddie, and this is our live podcast from the 2019 Beer City Open. Oh, yeah, Beer City Open, baby. Yes. Uh, Guys, this is going to be a very unusual podcast because we're just going to be doing some live streams with some of our friends in the pickleball world throughout this entire event, and then afterwards, compiling it all together. But for right now, we are live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. And we're live on Twitch. And guess what, guys? We have a guest with us. We have our good oh, friend. Well. Yeah. Hey, right, right here. She is. She's right here. Hi. Hey, how are hi. you? We have our friend, Martina Coakley. Martina, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, you guys? Thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm so excited. Thank you for coming yeah. on the show. We really appreciate it. Yeah, this is great. Gotta love it. Uh, super exciting about this, right? We just kind of, you know, we thought, hey. <laughs> There's Martina. We've been wanting to have her on. Let's have her on. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think they, they, they're they lying. Actually, I invited myself. So I invited myself and they accepted. And that's um, that's just really sweet of you guys. So thank you. Now, this is awesome. I mean, it's like everywhere we turn at this amazing event, there's another pro in the pickleball world. I like, I'm just... I'm in heaven right now. This is like a pickleball dream. I totally agree. I mean, agree. you guys are famous. Oh, Come on. Yeah, no. Like, they're so famous. No. You're the famous one <laughs> right? that oh, we have on the show. I don't know. We're, we're just two nerds that like to live stream stuff. That's all. Well, you guys put out amazing stuff, and you really bring a lot of joy to the pickleball world. Tell, tell us more about how great we are, Ooh, please. Well, please what can I say? Yeah. You bring, <laughs> besides um, two fabulous personalities, you definitely bring some really good players and chat about things and I always learn something new okay I love when people come um, and have a drink with you guys Mm -hmm. it just gets a little more fun Um, so yeah I definitely follow okay and I just it's been my goal for the last six months to be on your show and bam I have to come to Michigan from Miami to be on your show. So I feel very, very special. Very cool. Yes. (laughs) Well, thank you very much for the kind words. That that definitely means a lot to us. Uh, Yes. It just it always surprises me that anybody knows who we are. I know. I don't even know who we are. (laughs) That's crazy. Uh, We already have a comment from John Davidson, of course, right? Because he can't. He just can't hold himself up. Johnny. Hey, Johnny. How are you? Yeah. He says, Martina. You are missed. Yeah. We miss you here. I, you know, I was really hoping he was going to come to this because I got to hang out with him a little, a little bit at the U.S. Open, but that's it. And Webby's never met him, and he's just, he's a funny guy. He is just a ball of fun, what yeah. can I tell you? I mean, uh, yeah. I met John, actually, in Davey, Florida tournament, and um, what can I say? I'm just, like, really happy that I belong in his circle. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, I'm still trying to find my way into that circle. I heard it's, like, a prestigious it's group. It's very yeah. special. It's really hard to get in. That's cool. Or I want to get into the Martina Coakley group because, Ooh. first of all, you live in Miami, right? Yes, sir. I and I'm in, in Naples. Miami. It's like an hour and a half Ooh. away, you know? Very close. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. I love that um, Alligator Alley. Yes. Oh, yeah. Loves me back. It, in, man, Travels fast. If, if you guys have never driven down 41 from Miami <gasps> to Naples, it, there are alligators literally... Yes. Everywhere on the side of the road. We, yeah. we were down for there for the Orange Bowl a couple years ago yes. at Hard Rock Stadium. And Michigan was playing. And we're both my wife and I are both Michigan fans. And we drove back. And I swear to God, I saw a thousand alligators on the side of the road. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's cr- they're there's everywhere. Tons. Yeah. Yeah. You could you could go hunting there. We could. We there's could go. cheetahs, too, supposedly. Oh, <laughs> panthers but and bears. Panthers, yes. Yeah. So yeah. one day, um, you know, a lot of times I also invite myself to John Pickable show. <laughs> and he is he also accepts, actually, believe it or not. So I took the wrong turn coming out of Miami because I wanted to go on the highway, obviously, just yep. a turnpike. Took the wrong turn, took 41, 
Uh, it took me forever, but yeah. it's like the most beautiful drive, you guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, they it's really touristy. Yep. So I'm kind of happy I took the wrong turn. But then when I saw the sign, like there's cheetahs and stuff, like I got a little concerned. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I mean, I was like in southern. We're in southern Florida. Yeah, that's Cheetahs? that's their world, yeah. right? The Everglades. It's yeah, yeah, Everglades. They're everywhere. Did you see an alligator when you were down visiting <laughs> yeah, last time? Maybe a couple, but yeah. you know what? My problem is sometimes I uh, I focus on the road. I drive yeah. fast. My goal was to get to the Johnny Pickleball show. Uh, Nothing was. Um, tr- I, I didn't want to lose my focus right. what I was doing. <laughs> so maybe next time I should maybe stop on a side of the road for like a minute to yeah. observe. It's yeah. crazy. Well, speaking yeah. of Johnny Pickleball, rumor has it he might actually appear on this podcast as well. You just, you just got to stay tuned to find out if that happens. Ooh. Very good chance that might happen. Yeah. Um, and Martina, uh, this is your first time on our show. So there's a question we always love to ask people that come on our show. And that is, how did you first get into pickleball? That's a great question, you guys. So actually, I avoided the sport with all force and stayed away for probably about three years, if not more. Um, I saw a sweet friend of mine, uh, Christine. Actually, Christine McGrath and I go way back. Met in North Carolina, bonded uh, by through well through some fish bowls a long time ago. <laughs> nice. And possibly played some tennis, but mainly fish bowls. So that was super fun. And then we each kind of went our separate ways, but we stayed in touch. Um, I'm a military wife, and she was in med school. So, but then she started playing this awesome sport, and I was like, you know, you go do you go play this paddle like thing. I don't know what that yeah. is. I'm a tennis player. I came to United States play, to play tennis. Um, and then finally one day I flew to Houston and I sat at this beautiful country club. People are playing tennis and uh, it just kind of reminded me, I, I went there for work, but it reminded me that these people are competing and I really, really miss competition. Believe it or not, uh, Christine was boarding a flight to go to London to play in Europe. I picked up my phone, called her. I was like, there's no way you're going to have this much fun without me. <laughs> so tell me, tell me now what I have to do in order to get on this uh, little pickleball addiction. And uh, sure enough, I uh, got uh, some paddles in the mail. I tried and got hooked. I mean, it was, it was kind of bad. It's like, yeah. So, so you, you got bit by the same bug that most people do I when mean, they start pickleball? And I, for, I refuse to recognize it as a sport, but it's just so much fun, you guys. I okay. mean, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. So much fun. Uh, but I got to tell you, we got a comment on Facebook from somebody that doesn't quite believe your story. <laughs> uh, Mr. John Davison says, she knew that I was playing and was a big fan of mine. Don't let her tell you any different. So oh, is there Johnny. any truth to that? <laughs> well, you know, sometimes along the way you get inspired by other people. <laughs> so he's definitely keeping the sport super fun. And, oh, yeah. But it also reminds you, um, not just as a player, but, you know, as a person, you you get to experience this fun pickleball trips and you bond with people through, you know, the sport you love. And then suddenly you're like, oh, my gosh, like, I Actually, we travel together sometimes. You um, possibly go and have um, a drink with them sometimes as a group. It's super fun. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like a lot of fun. I got to meet a lot of fun people. And obviously, John Davison, I mean, he's super famous in Florida. (laughs) Now, um, he is actually making his waves uh, in uh, Georgia. So that's... I just can't get more excited than, yeah. We don't need to feed his ego anymore. Than it already <laughs> I know, is, right? I know. I just, I had to a little bit. Hi, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> and I was going to talk about how John Davison was on an episode of Dinking Around with Eddie and Webby, but I don't want to, I don't oh, want to go into wow. that. I don't want to feed his ego yeah. anymore. Yeah. Saw yeah. that one. He's had enough. Yeah. Enough about John yeah. Davidson. He, he always comes up in every one of our podcasts. I know. I know. Enough of that. Jeez. So he's spying on people. Yeah, I know, right? I know, on Facebook. But we want to talk about you. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm yeah. scared now. No, it's cool. So so talk about, like, where are you from originally? You know, talk, talk about your background a little bit. Yeah, so I'm actually a Slovenian. Do you okay. guys know where that is? Mm-hmm. Okay, who yeah. else is Slovenian that you guys possibly might know of? Oh my God, I feel like this is a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're being baited. Careful, here. you are. Yeah. Okay. No, give, no give one. Give us a hint. Okay, like yeah. someone that's very powerful and important in the United States. A Slovenian. 
I, I oh, have an idea. Our, uh, oh, uh, our, our, our uh, first lady? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's what I was yeah, going to yeah, say. Yeah, I wasn't, right. wasn't yes. confident enough in the answer. Yes, I know. Good, because good I, job. Yeah. Good job. I mean, a lot of people confuse it with Slovakia. Nothing wrong with Slovakia. It's a beautiful country, but it's Slovenia is actually like a little ways from Slovakia. Okay. But yeah, I came... Um, well, born and raised in Slovenia, uh, played a lot of tennis and other sports to help my tennis game, uh, played some really strong tournaments as a young teen, and then decided to uh, take uh, uh, tennis scholarships that I was offered uh, here in the United States, and one of them was actually to Michigan State. Okay. All but right. my prerogative to not play for Michigan State was, it's too cold here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I picked Texas, so I moved to Texas. Be- better choice, yeah. Yes, yes. It was a lot of fun. Like, playing tennis, college tennis in the United States was a lot of fun, and yeah, and then I met, uh, I was actually ready to go home, packed my bags, went home for Christmas, came back, funny story, uh, told my dad I have to go pack the rest of my ba- my um, room in Texas, he believed me, which if my daughter ever tells me that, I would not believe her. <laughs> so I went back and then I spontaneously met a very, very handsome soldier. Uh, had no idea that American Army, ex- I mean, United States military exists. Like yeah. that was not my world. And uh, managed to lose a plane ticket, a return plane ticket to go back to Slovenia. C- conveniently lost it? Seriously <laughs> lost it. Oh, serious. Okay. I was right. freaking out. Yeah. So I kept telling my dad for months that, um, yeah, yeah, I'll be back. I, then I kind of got a job and um, stayed around a little longer. And here I am, uh, married to a military a soldier who's actually currently deployed in Afghanistan. Wow. He's doing really well. But yeah, so that was that's the story. I'm still here. We're yeah, we're still here. That that's right. that's so cool. Yeah. So what what year again was it that you that you moved here? Was it- I moved here in 2001 in okay. January, and then uh, September 11 happened. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So yeah, I was right. here for the whole thing. It was different. So yeah. how how was that from you know from your perspective, like just coming to this country? I felt like a big chaos. Like I I guess in my country, comparing to something like. So let's say I compare September 11th to something that I experienced as like a young child, I would say at 10 years old, Slovenia was involved in a short period of like the war that started in Yugoslavia. So that was maybe like something similar that everybody kind of in a country kind of freaks out, sticks together. There was just a lot of everybody kind of got united in a hot second. And that was really nice to see. That's really good to experience that suddenly all these people from all different parts of the world, you know, U- United States is a melting pot, came together. So that that was something that I experienced in my country when I was 10, that people kind of pulled it together. And it was really good to see and kind of come out of this together. Yeah. So it was, it was definitely a different kind of experience. I could imagine that would have been yeah pretty pretty yeah. interesting and kind of I felt maybe a little stuck in a foreign country yeah because at that moment um, you know as a like a teen I I wanted to I, I was like I'm going home but I'm like how am I gonna go home nothing so kind of calm down like take a moment and just kind of team my team my tennis team pulled together it was really nice to see so it was something that I will kind of hold close to uh, to me for a long time. Okay. Yeah. What, yeah. One thing you mentioned is that you actually, you said you wanted to play other sports to actually supplement your tennis game. Is that is that right? Can you talk more about that? Uh, yes. Okay. So I guess as a tennis player, you know, definitely there's some advantages. Is that is that what you, maybe I didn't hear well, you No, no. Correctly. So, you know, I, I hear a lot of times uh, people in their pickleball game say, oh, I'm also going to do this to help with my pickleball game maybe it's yoga maybe it's table tennis maybe it's you know it's oh, something else to yes. supplement it. and I, I think you said something about I wanted to do these other sports to help kind of with my tennis game yeah so I guess when uh, you know when you're training as a young athlete I uh, started playing tennis way too early following my brother's um, yeah. steps and I felt like my parents well my dad did very well he was a part of Yugoslavian basketball team so he knew a lot about supplementing other sports and incorporating that in your tennis game so I just briefly had a conversation with someone who was a hockey player ice hockey player so one of those things was actually hockey I played hockey twice a week to condition to be quicker faster on a tennis court to have those movements 
movements. You know, wow. you cut to the ball. But as a 15-year-old, 16-year-old, like, you know, up to till, till I left for States, I really didn't think much of it. I just kind of did what, like, I was advised. Uh, I played... Um, so I played ice hockey, did yoga, did kickboxing, did all these different sports to become a better tennis player. So it kind of all has to come together because then someone told me just like, um, I was probably like about 18 years old and said, hey, did you know that Michael Jordan does ballet? Yeah, I was like, right. stop yep. this. Yeah. Like there's, it's basically, it needs to be a very cohesive training to produce a quality athlete. And I really think uh, that... In, um, transpires into now pickleball like what I've observed in the last so basically I've been playing pickleball for about a year and a half a little less maybe and what I've observed the game has changed in this short period of the time that I've been involved in a game right it's a lot quicker players are a lot faster um, they can really change the pace of the ball better they're more controlled their footwork I mean just right now I met a new player a tennis player impeccable footwork you don't just kind of wake up and get to the line, to a kitchen line, and be like, my footwork today is going to be impeccable. Right, yeah. He must be doing something right, right? Yeah. So um, I think it just really cohesively has to all come together. Um, and I really respect that when people have that mentality of, you know, I'm going to take a little bit out of this, a little bit out of this, and I'm going to put it all together. Um, so that now we just see better, better and better athletes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty amazing, yeah. too, to, to think like, you know, Okay, I want to get better at this sport, so I'm gonna go. I don't even know, like, what be like, what would be, what would be something that would supplement pickleball? You think, like, karate? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's. I mean, quick hands. Yeah, quick. Good boxing. Quick karate. hands can control your emotions, yes. right? You know, yes. being able to like stay focused, discipline. Yes. I, I mean, I, I think you can kind of tie that connection across the board, right? Yeah, like, I think Webby, thing? you should yeah. sign up for a karate class. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> or I could uh, take Steve Peranto's <laughs> advice and uh, play cornhole professionally because yeah. oh. he said there's a, a lot of similarities yeah. to cornhole with dinking okay. and stuff like that. So. I could, I could totally see myself being uh, but Prasa, a pro cornholer. That's right. Did he include beer also, yes. or was it like beer? Knowing Steve, I'm pretty sure okay. beer was involved. Yeah. Yeah, so beer. the game probably got a lot better but then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like you can't play cornhole without a beer. I don't even. <laughs> no. think, I don't even think it's possible. Yeah, it's, it's not I possible. possible. I don't yeah. think you're allowed to, especially <laughs> if you were doing it professionally. Yeah. I think, I think I you have to be holding a, a beer in one hand and then the yeah. the bag in the other. Yeah. Well, another really um, possibly. Po um, quality sport could be um, a beer beer pong you know yeah. because oh, yeah. it's very yeah. precise ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah we're having uh, a little wind <laughs> gust here <laughs> wind gust here guys sorry it yeah. must be very precise yeah. uh, you know to 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 win the game so maybe that's another one that you should consider but i think you should start with the karate lessons for sure that'd be fun yeah Nice. I've, I've always wanted to do a martial art. I think it would be so much too. fun. Some yeah. jujitsu, maybe some yeah. taekwondo, yeah. something like that. Yeah, I would love to be able to do some nice looking karate chops and crane kicks <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. Just <laughs> make sure, like the person, like neck, right. like on the other side, you know, it's not as like um, quick. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> What, so what other sports? You you mentioned hockey. You mentioned so, tennis, obviously. I hockey. I, yeah. So actually, I um, so in Europe, it's a little different system. I went to a sport gymnasium, which is considered, so it's a high school. We oh, have different cool. kind of high yeah. schools. So I um, was really fortunate that I qualified to get to a sport gymnasium, which a lot of, we basically had athletes who either played um, a very high level performance sports. Um, or we have professional athletes that went to high school but weren't homeschooled. Where I'm from, that wasn't really popular to be homeschooled. Okay. So um, I went to sport gymnasium and we had, they were very specific. They knew, like, for example, there were classes A, B, C, D, okay? So A classes were um, like uh, swimming, uh, they had uh, ice skating, um, water polo, and then B classes were like a ball, like let's say a basketball. I had a ping pong player, a couple tennis players, so we were grouped together. So then what they would do each semester they would change like a sport that we focused on. So we did a lot of gymnastics for uh, balance and uh, we did, um, then we switched it to, um, what is it? It's not, um, it's like a field hockey. Yeah. We did that. Uh, we did swimming for a semester, but they would like combine sometimes two sports. Then um, because 
my country has a part of Alps, and our Alps are really close, you know, yep. Slovenia, mm-hmm. Italy, Austria. We would have a week of skiing and then competition. Uh-huh. So basically, every kid knew how to ski just about, and uh, they would put on a competition. Now, you get a bunch of athletes who are very competitive, and you put them in an environment, but a different sport, I mean, we just hauled. Yeah. That was, it's in you. So that was um, a very good experience. So I got to experience all sorts of you know, I mean, I'm, again, let's face it, I'm long and lean. Uh, uh, gymnastics, I sprained my ankle probably about eight times. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it's hard. Yeah. Like, I'm not one of those, like, get on a beam. and But I that was good for tennis at yeah. the end of the day. Sure. So. H- have you ever done gymnastics, Webby? No, I never have. No? Nope. <laughs> have your daughters? I've done somersaults. Have you, yeah. <laughs> if that counts. I can do a mean oh cartwheel. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, yeah. my daughters. My daughters have done yeah, some they, gymnastics okay. in their okay. day. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, that's so cool, dude, that you got an opportunity to do that. I wish there were more things like that in America that people had access to because, you know, I, I don't know about you, Webby, but even when I, like, I, I went to a very large high school my first two years. And there was no way I was going to join the football team. There was no way I was going to get on the basket or baseball team because I wasn't good enough, right? So there really wasn't access to very many sports once I got done with middle school. And then I transferred to the high school where I met Webby at, where there were 43 kids in our class. Wow. So then you are you can get into any sport you want, but yeah. you're not. it's not going to be the most competitive thing in the world because it's a very small school. So you're up against yeah. other you know, 200-person high schools. Yeah. So I don't feel like there's there's a, a lot of ways for somebody that's you know, kind of riding that middle line between I want to be athletic, I want to do these things, but I don't have that natural talent and, and have the ability to, to play competitive sports. Um, I would, there's pluses and minuses. So let's yeah. say you're, you're focusing right now on high school and I understand like if let's say a child wants to play a sport, parents possibly have to outsource and go somewhere mm. else, play club sports. But what you guys have that most of, most of the world does not have is collegiate sports. And that yeah. is such an amazing opportunity that, um, you know, those kids work hard and like we worked hard and, um, to get, to get an opportunity to get like a full ride to go and play a sport, um, and basically travel and you're, yeah. you are, you need to study and you need to travel to play. It's just incredible. And this is something that schools don't offer in Europe. So for example, I have friends who either went pro and left school and another thing that it's very unlikely in Europe people don't go to school later so let's say in America here you go to and you're a sophomore I have a friend who's a fabulous tennis player still plays on tour uh, she as a sophomore at UCLA uh, dropped out and is playing professional sports well when she's done if she wants a college degree she's probably gonna go right back it's not really common and I feel I can speak for European cultures to go back and, and get a degree it's just yeah. not okay. so I feel like your system here is I mean absolutely superior I I, I, um, I think the opportunities are endless so you do have dad okay. but I can see what you mean in high school um, high school teams, how that would kind of play a role for someone to get the a scholarship for to play collegiate sports. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like I, I so wish I would have been a lot more active in in high school athletics than I was. I mean, like Webby, what about you? Like, do, don't you wish that we would have known about pickleball back in high school? Oh my god. Or, or really any racket sport, even tennis now that would help us with our game or racquetball, mm-hmm. like being able to play back then. Right. Oh, absolutely. They, I like. I, I hate the fact that we didn't learn about it till just like a year and a half, two years ago. Right. It's just it kills me because, man, how how good would we be now if we knew about oh, this yeah. in high school? Cause yeah. Because it's the kind of game where like it doesn't matter what age you are, you can pick it up very easily, but it's very difficult to master. But had we had the last 10, 20 years to play, right, we'd be doing a lot better than only scoring four points against Kyle Yates. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh! Okay. Yeah. Well, it's not a bagel, so that's that's a success. <laughs> yeah. It's good. yeah. Our, our goal was one point. We got four. So. Right. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm still. Yeah. I'm actually. I'm very happy good. with the four points that we <laughs> yeah. scored against Kyle Yates. That's right. Wow! Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Thank did you. I mention okay. we scored por- four points against Kyle Yates <laughs> yes. in a match? <laughs> you, you sure did. Maybe you can repeat it. I didn't hear it well. Good job. Four. Yes. Four that's points. right. Wow. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, that's awesome. So obviously, athletics has been a huge part of your life, and. 
Now you're here in Miami, right? Yes, okay. I live in Miami. I call it a professional gypsy life. Okay. Uh, we move possibly every two years, every three years. So we'll see what's next. But right now we're going to enjoy Miami for another hopefully two years. And it's just I really feel that Latin culture, which sounds really weird, it's very close to my culture. Okay. And uh, I love food. Um, I'm a foodie. So there's a lot of options there. They do need to come on board with pho. So I don't know. How do you guys pronounce it? Pho or pho? I usually call it pho, but that's like like just a... It's pho. I, and that and that's what I've heard, but every time I say it, I feel like I'm about to curse. Right. I know. So I'm know, like, the so safe weird. way is it's pho. pho. Right. Yeah. My okay, wife is actually one that taught me about pho. Yeah. Oh. I'm pretty sure she says pho. pho. Does she? Yeah, it's pho. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, you guys, there's like four restaurants in Miami, or maybe three. Yeah. Um, I even made a call last Sunday. I uh, wanted to go to pho restaurant at South Point Beach, and. I called. We drove all the way from Coral Gables. We get there. I look 30 minutes for a parking spot. We walk up to the restaurant. The restaurant's closed. So I was like, what's happened? So the owner comes out and said, I'm sorry, our something's wrong in our kitchen. You guys, I've been looking for pho, by the way, for a month. Oh, yeah, man. So I just really think right now it's not meant to be in Miami. I'm okay. going to have to go find it somewhere else. <laughs> but, but plenty of Cuban restaurants. Oh, there. my gosh. Cuban yeah. food is great, isn't it? Cuban food uh. is fabulous. And you know what? Another one that people may Maybe skip. It's a uh, Peruvian. Yeah. Peruvian kitchen, like, and all the ceviche. I mean, oh. and their cocktails. Yeah. I think you should come to the um, to the East Coast a little bit and check it out. We've we've gone over there quite a few times, and you know, <laughs> Miami go for a couple of days and get to experience the city. But it's like that's a city where you could spend a long time in and still not even experience all of it. Yes, I agree. Yeah. It's got a lot to offer. Yeah. And it's nice to get out and cool off in Michigan as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so for anybody just tuning in, uh, as we said earlier, we are live at the 2019 Beer City Open. We've got a special guest, Martina Coakley, with us. Uh, hopefully I said that right. Did I say that right? Actually, Coakley? you did, but yeah. sometimes I preferred hot, kuchi- um, hot, hot chili. Well, well, I, yeah. It, it's funny you say that because <laughs> I was at the U.S. Open this year, and God bless the woman who was announcing at the U.S. Open. She's probably like the nicest, sweetest lady in the world, right? Like she's like she's probably like the person you want to like sit down and, and, and talk with and you know hear stories about things with. Just the nicest lady. But man, did she butcher some names, especially yours. <laughs> she, as she did. I want to go. Bless her heart. I, yeah, she I, did. I want to go through a few variations that I heard <laughs> as they were pronouncing Martina's name. I heard Cochili. Cochili. I heard. Coachly. Coachly. So just a slight variation slight of that. Variation. Uh, I think I heard the, um, what was the other one that it was like? Cockley. Cockley. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I heard that too. Uh, yeah. It was It was funny. Every time I was just shaking my head. But she also, I think she said like. Chili. Uh, hot chili. Hot chili. Yeah. Yep. Hot chili is the <laughs> yeah. one that I accepted. Uh, yep. That's yeah. a good one right there. And your name was the worst. She did butcher some other yeah, ones. Like Tarashenko was like Tara Kova or something like that. So it's, yeah. it's, it's a hard way to pronounce. I mean, it's a lot of names to pronounce. I give them, I mean, all the respect. It's yeah. really oh, yeah. hard to pronounce all these names if, unless it's like Smith or, you know, yeah. Potter or something like that. Yeah. American. Very American. Very American, yeah. Yeah. So That's cool. So you, uh, you, you do come over to the golf side of the state fairly often right yes yeah. i love naples you guys and yeah. i i still do not know my way around i just <laughs> stare at the gps and pray that it takes me the right way either <laughs> yeah. south or um north but i make it to uh yes i make it to naples i just feel the quality of players there um is just superior and um yes i just often invite myself and they accept and it's just yeah, it's yeah. it's been really nice, and uh, uh, Johnny Pickleball show has been so amazing because I got to practice with the best of the best, and just giving me that uh, opportunity to see how it really looks like, and you know, a, a professional match, how professional match should look like. It's um, it's a uh, it's a blessing. So I take the opportunity. I jump on that turnpike, and two hours later, I'm in Naples. And you're there. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, so. I, I got to watch you a little bit at the um, the Pickleball Global Challenge Cup as well. 
the East versus West this year. Yes. And so, yeah, there yes. was some there were some very good matches. Really good matches. It was mm. really hot. I mean, that, that show I, I loved so much. I so want to be back on that show. Yeah. I think it was such an amazing experience uh, from production to, you know, um, just everything, the hospitality, everything was fabulous. And I think they did a fabulous job, like, running it. Um, the teams were super fun. The people on the global show, I mean, the global cup were super yeah. fun. So um, the, the hard part, obviously, is the timer. Sure. Uh, yeah. Another hard part is the ball. It's, mm. it's like, a lot to figure out quickly if yeah. you practice outside. But I feel like but my fourth match, which was, like, the one before last, yeah. I kind of figured it out. Okay. It took me a hot minute, but... Was that the one where you and Johnny played? Oh, uh, my gosh. Johnny, yes. Yeah, that well, was a really good one. I love yeah. playing against Dex. Yeah. Uh, Dex and I are super good friends. Actually, Deckel Bar yeah. is one of the top tennis players. I mean, just amazing that how he can, he can actually go home to Israel, not play pickleball at all, like, touch his ground in the um, United States and just, I mean, takes off. That's I mean, so he's cool. just wow. amazing. So I have a lot of respect for him, and we're, we're good friends. So it's great to play against him. That's pretty cool. Nice. I feel like I'm rusty if I just go two weeks without playing. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, Deckel's a solid player. So yeah. For those of you guys that don't know, the Pickleball Global Challenge Cup was a little bit different where there was a 20-minute time limit on every single match. And then you switch sides at 10 minutes, and you're allowed a couple timeouts but not in the last two minutes, obviously. And I'm assuming it changes the whole strategy of what you're trying to do. Can you, can you talk about like how that played on you mentally? Yeah, so I guess like the first, um, the first couple matches, you know, you you're you're basically constantly in the rush. I try not to watch the the clock, but you know that the clock is there. So you, um, I try to start slow, but definitely you become you begin to rush, and you see a lot of players don't want to take long, don't want to have long points or get into the dink rally that normally you you would um, if this is your game plan. So you kind of stray away from your game plan. That might not be your like your strength, but you try to take advantage of you know what you have. And um, there's multiple players, multiple like yeah, people that just try to rush and finish the ball quickly, and hopefully it turn out into their favor. Yeah. But it was it was exciting. Um, it's kind of good to play a little bit under pressure sometimes. It's it like kind of I feel like I was living on the edge a little bit. Yeah. So it, was good. it was good. Yeah. 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 I wasn't there in person, but I watched it. It was it was a very fun thing to watch. Yeah. All the the live streams that were going on for it, it was very cool. I liked it. Yeah. What about, uh, so this is your second Beer City Open, right? This is my second Beer City, yes. Yeah. Um, just amazingly uh, ran tournament. I mean, yeah. just such quality. Yes. Um, literally everyone um, is here, but maybe a couple players missing. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a pretty place. I mean, Grand Rapids is such, I feel like it's so hidden. Mm -hmm. Like, the downtown's beautiful. There's, they have a lot to offer. The venue's great. Uh, kudos to Andrea Coop. He, she's, I mean, amazing job she does with oh, yeah. the sponsors and treating us very well. So, I think the tournament has ran really, um, really great, and I, I'm definitely coming back. Cool. Nice. Yeah I, yeah, I look forward to this. This is the, the second one we've been to. It's the second annual, um, but yeah. I, I plan on coming every year. It's uh, This is like one of the events I look forward to the most throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it. And uh, this is my first taste of like seeing all the pros in one location. I've never been to like the Nationals or the U.S. Open or anything like that. So to me, this is like my Nationals and U.S. Mm -hmm. Open all combined into one. This is amazing. I love it. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, to me, it has a lot of the great charm of the U.S. Open, right? Because you do have a lot of the pros. You also have ex access to a lot of the pros as well. You have the Perrin Beer Garden, which is, you know, you, you can buy beer at the U.S. Open and stuff like that. But it's almost like on a little bit more intimate of a scale because you can get lost at the U.S. Open very easily, not location-wise, just in the whole experience because it is overwhelming. It t I feel like it took me two days to like not be anxious every time I walked anywhere with like, <laughs> oh my god, look at all these people and yeah. look at everything that's going on, all these vendors. It's just it's 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 a very different experience, but also has a very similar spirit to it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. The Beer City Open was actually the first tournament I ever played in last year. Webby and I played. It was actually both of our first tournaments. Yeah, first time either of us did a, a men's doubles tournament yeah. ever. I had done like a little round robin uh, singles thing 
I mean, I played with it would, like you would play with a random partner for yeah. each thing. Totally different experience. So yeah, this was the first time either of us had done a, a doubles tournament. Yeah, and we did absolutely horrible, but we still got hooked on it. <laughs> well, congratulations. I mean, you have to kind of break through somewhere. Yeah, you know, I mean, I feel like for the first five tournaments was like, what am I doing? Yeah. Am I in the right place? Like, yeah. I, maybe I should be playing. Like, like maybe I should kind of downgrade a little bit and kind of get myself back up to like the pro level because it was really hard just to kind of jump in. But I think I took the challenge and I think um, it just takes time to grow and uh, to develop yourself as a player, no matter what level you play. Mm -hmm. If you're a 3-5 all the way to 5-0, like, I mean, it just takes time. So, but if you're not going out there and trying, you're never know. So yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. We we definitely put ourselves out there. Yes, that's for sure. (laughs) And yeah. uh, and we joked around about this before, but I think we should do it. We should just go five zero next year. Let's just do it. Let's Why just not? do it. <laughs> I mean, it. It. Yeah. I mean, you got four points off Kyle. Yay. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's the thing is, it's like if we that's get four like... points in a five zero tournament, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how, how many pros have been skunked by Kyle? I'm sure there's numerous, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We didn't get skunked. That's yeah. right. That is right. absolutely right. You did not get a zero. So yeah. congratulations. I mean, just, yeah. I mean, if. Don't count game one. Right. We didn't get skunked. We skunked in game one, but game two, right. yeah. we did not get skunked. We'll, we'll sign up for 5 0 singles and then just be like, but we have to play together. Do you think they'll let us do that? I think so. <laughs> after, <laughs> after seeing how we performed, I think they'll be fine with it. All right. That's cool. Well, uh, so you, you actually played yesterday. Right? Yes, okay. I played yesterday with Johnny Pickleball. All right. Yeah, nice. we uh, we had a great time. Johnny's such a great player. Um, we lost our first match against Lee and Adam, who got the bronze. And I mean, they're just incredible players. And you really, they don't give you much. Yeah. Um, and it's really, it was actually really, really hard to not make, um, you know, unforced errors. And unfortunately, we made too many. Um, but yeah, they're just great players. But we um, we did very very well in a second match. Uh, basically, I kind of like came clean and told Johnny, like, I'm struggling. I know I'm not in a good place right now. We were down. I think we were down like 12, 6 or 12, 5, something mm-hmm. like that. And I, Johnny stepped up. I said, you're on your own. You're playing singles and three quarters of the court. Till I regained my confidence, we pulled through 16-14. Yeah. Nice. So I really give this one out to him. I mean, Johnny is just, he, he, you know, he's in with his entire heart, like whole heart in place. He's hard out every time he gets on the court. So, and he's just so positive. I love playing with him. Just a positivity that comes out of him. It's really easy for me to play with a player like that. And uh, just to kind of be encouraging. Um, and yeah, I mean, we had a blast. And then we, uh, yeah, we got, we um, lost two amazing players, um, Catherine and Raf. So yeah. that was a tough one. But yeah, I had a great experience, and I'm really, really excited about tomorrow. All right. No singles today for me. Yeah. So, um, let's and, talk about tomorrow. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, tomorrow it's gonna be fabulous. I mean, I'm excited. I'm first time playing with uh, Julie Manuel. Um, she is another Onyx player. She's my teammate, Onyx uh, superstar, and uh, very excited. Just gonna figure it out this afternoon. Uh, have some practice, hit some balls, and okay. uh, you know, just be confident because literally um, this the field here is so tough. We have nothing to lose, so that's my mentality going in. Play yeah. your heart out and uh, do your best and have fun. Because okay. sometimes I forget. I'm so competitive. <laughs> like, yes. I will, like, grind till the end. Yeah. Like, it's not over till it's over. And uh, I just need to remind myself, like, have some fun. Okay. Have fun. Oh, yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Martina. We, we definitely want to give you the opportunity to talk about how people can follow you and your pickleball journey and all the stuff you have going on. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully next time soon again. But yes, uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Martina Coakley. It's K-O-C-H-L-I. Or, or, or Coachilli. Hot Chili. Or Hot Chili, yeah. Hot Chili. Um, I'm also on Facebook. And I do have a um, website, Pickleball Fashionista. It is in a growing process, growing stages. But it will be out there before too long. Um, nice. And yeah, you can just maybe learn some more things about pickleball, travel, nutrition, lifestyle. Um, you know, it's kind of going to be all around pickleball and most definitely some fashion. Because as Europeans, that's just kind of our our thing. We love fashion. Hey, let's bring it. We like to bring beer 
and pickleball together. You can bring fashion and pickleball together. Yes. There we go. There we go. Yes. So stay tuned. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. This so was much. awesome. I really appreciate it. What a great segment we just had with Martina Coakley coming on live from the 2019 Beer City Open. Yeah, that was awesome. She was uh, a great guest. I loved having her on. Very cool. Very cool time. The next segment of the podcast here, uh, the guest that we had on, he actually did some live commentary with us and had a great time with him uh, and thought that, hey, why not have him stick around a little bit, do some kind of podcasty, interviewee type material and add it to Podcast 46. Yes, it was a great time. It was awesome doing commentary with him and then hanging out with him after the match. Uh, very good times. That's right. And this gentleman we are talking about is none other than Mr. Johnny Pickleball. And let's jump into it. You recently just uh, just made a little bit of move down there in Southwest Florida, man, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Big move, big move. So okay. going from about one court to uh, about close to 74. Yeah. So yeah, wow. running into the uh, right... Well, the Southwest Florida Pickleball Academy, make sure I say it right, yeah. Southwest Florida Pickleball Academy um, down in East Naples, as well as Veterans Park. So East Naples, home of the U.S. Open. So Nice. You said 74 courts? Yeah, yes. when you combined um, Veterans Park, which has about eight, I'm going to get a few more, I believe, and then um, 60, I think it's like 62 possibly right now at East Naples. Wow. Yeah. And they're adding 10 more. They mm -hmm. just got a $25 million upgrade package. Wow. So. Yeah, the plans for the new facility there is pretty amazing. So Yeah, yeah. I Got to love East Naples. Uh, and I will tell you guys, from personal experience, I actually had a couple lessons with Johnny Pickleball last weekend, and uh, when I went there, uh, you know, I was I was not able to dink properly, and I left looking like like these guys out here on the match that we just streamed. So give or take. Only, give only or after take. two lessons, right? <laughs> yeah, give or take. <laughs> give or take. Mostly take. Yes. Uh, but it, again, yeah, no, you did good, man. You had, yeah. to, you had to paddle up a little bit more. A little yeah. bit of tracking happening. Yeah. So, but it's good. And then uh, obviously there's a another big move with that. Uh, my Johnny Pickleball show now is obviously also going to be on Friday nights under the uh, Minto U.S. Open Championship Court. Yeah, so that's going nice. on. We just had it last night where I was watching from home, obviously, but it was ladies' night, or, you know, women's doubles. So. What, was it tough to be here and watch it remotely? No. No? <laughs> no, it was women's doubles, so, okay. you know, I couldn't really participate sure. myself. But it was really good to see yeah. uh, such a good crowd there, even on, even in the summer in Florida. So yeah. It was really kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, the, the, amount of, uh, the amount of talent that is part of the Johnny Pickleball show outside of yourself is pretty incredible. Oh, uh, yeah. A lot of the top players, are, I mean, a lot of guys here have played in it um, that you're seeing today. Yeah. Uh, it's just really cool. I, it started off as being something that, um, you know, we just got together. We wanted to get some good games. And before you know it, everyone was coming and, and people were watching and it just turned into a thing, you know. So uh, just keep it going, right? Yeah. My favorite oh, yeah. part about it right now is that um, I have the Junior Academy associated to the Southwest Florida Pickleball Academy. I actually have the kids warm up the pros for the first half an hour and we do a nice picture which is probably and they have a moment you can see the kids they have a moment and you know that's my favorite part i'm sure that's got to be oh, yeah. know, the highlight of, of oh, you know their their year when they get a chance to do that yeah. so. enjoy your around the post but that's the coolest part <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> you know so but oh, yeah man. no it's a good move really happy about it so okay. very nice i know you're you're in that area too you guys are, are you eddie, you're eddie I, is i live there yeah, yeah. oh yeah so uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm from Michigan. I really don't stray too far from the Michigan area. So a, a tournament like this where almost all of the top pros in pickleball are here, the, for me, this is heaven. This is like paradise. This is amazing <laughs> yeah. right here. The Beer City Open at Belknap Park in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, yeah. You can't beat this, man. Yeah, a lot of good pros here. Actually, you guys have all the top pros here. It's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, to get this draw, I, you know, and you get a cool mug. I thought that that glass mug. Was oh really yeah, oh, yeah. The beer a little worried about glass. it on the flight home. I know. Personally. You know <laughs> yeah. I might have to put for a G lay on it. Or yeah, something. yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's Italian, right? Yeah, for it's G Italian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, me yeah, too, man. And then, uh, are you guys playing at all tomorrow? No, nope. no. Today singles. was it. That was it. it. We we wanted to just do one one tournament here while we were, uh, you know, so that way we could focus on the broadcasting and things like that. So. And how'd it go? Um. It, if you know, we well, let, let me put it to you this way last year here, we scored a total of three points for the combined men's doubles event, yep. perfect. And this year, we scored 18. So, I feel like we're moving up in the world, right? Quite the increase, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about progression, that's right. So, that's good. You're going in the right direction, yeah. We're moving in the right direction, but I definitely, uh, I definitely need a little bit more, uh, more, some more Johnny Pickleball lessons, that's for sure. <laughs> I actually need to correct you. You cut us short a point. It was 19, 19. that we scored. Okay. Yes. We got 
Got to give Six credit where credit's one. due, man. Three in game two, <laughs> ten in game three. Okay. But who's <laughs> counting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, well, I'm not even keeping hey, track, really. If, if you count the four points we got against Kyle Yates on Thursday. Oh, yeah. I feel yeah. like that All I feel right. like that counts. Yeah. Like, each point counts more than just one, though. It's Kyle Yates we were playing against. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, well, since I heard about that. That's, yeah. that's good. You guys, I, I thought I trained you well. But, you know, I, I told you, man, you can't watch Kyle. You I have know. to just watch the ball. So honestly, at our lesson, I did ask Johnny specifically. He said, do not watch him. Do not watch his feet. Do not watch his face. Don't watch him because he is going to try and throw you off. And yeah. guess what? Sure enough. He oh, threw man. us off. Yes, again. he did. And he, I, mean, I talked to him about it yesterday, actually. Yeah. You know, And he said, yeah, look this way and hit it that way. And yep. he was actually showing me. I was like, and that... I, I told him exactly not to do that. Yeah. Right. So, well, and then when good. he does the sick tricks, it's like I can't help but be in awe. I'm yeah. Like, Did he really just do that? Oh, yeah. wait, we're still playing. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the salt? The salt in the is definitely in the wound when he says sick tricks as he's doing. Oh it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right after. So yeah. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, we but, also had Byron making fun of us the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was that your referee? Yeah. He, well, he was the announcer. He was the announcer. Gizmo was our rash referee. But, yeah. We yeah. had like a. We had a, like a live announcer throughout the whole match. <laughs> Wait, Perfect. It, it honestly, it reminded it me of the like the Harlem Globetrotters, and we were the oh, Washington yeah. Capitals. Yeah, and is that what? The, yeah, the, was it Washington Generals? Oh, Washington Generals. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, that's how the show originated from for the Johnny Pickleball oh, show. Really? Kind of thinking of it like being the Harlem Globetrotters. So trying to be Metal Lark Lemon as much as possible. All right. For those yeah. who don't know, that was the original Globetrotter. That was him. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Nice. The one that threw confetti on the crowd. All know. right. Uh, nice. Not there yet with the confetti. No. <laughs> it's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he toyed with us a little bit. So, But who knows? Maybe now, You know, Ben Johns is challenging us now to do two versus one. He said he was going to play left-handed. Mm. But I've heard he's like a 4-5 left-handed, if not a 5-0 <laughs> oh anyway. So. Yeah, he's, yeah, that's actually yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's so, really good left-handed. I don't know that's going to make much of a difference, if right. we're quite honest with you. Him and his brother, Colin, actually. Colin does a switch. He has two forehands. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, and he does the two-handed backhand as well. But in singles, you'll see him tomorrow, I bet, with a, is that a lefty forehand down the line. Switching it up? Yeah. That's cool. Uh, to be honest, though, like, I, uh, I feel like I did not get my pickleball fix in as far as pickleball playing. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I might take – I think we should take Ben John, John's up on this offer, maybe, potentially. We, we'll see. We might be able to, man. Oh, uh, yeah. You have plenty of daylight left. I mean, it doesn't yeah. even get dark, I found out, until like 930 at night here. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Well, it, they got lights here, so. Yeah, so – you know, for those of you that don't know, Johnny and I live in pretty much the same area in Florida. And when I was here three weeks ago, uh, kind of getting, you know, ready for the state games in Michigan, I was coming up to Belknap every night playing. And then it started to get dark. And I'm like, you know, man, I should really think about having dinner and going home or whatever. And I look at my watch and it's 930. And I'm like, what? This is past my bedtime, man. <laughs> Where like usually it gets dark, you know, 8, 10, 8, 15 ish yep. by us right now. So it definitely, uh, it was a little bit of a of a shock to me. Messing with my schedule. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I live in Naples, so like it's like a mandatory curfew at Yeah. At I think even Burger King closes at eight in Naples. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but no, I mean who we got so we have uh Henry Winardo and John Sperling. Uh taking on who are they taking on? Do you guys know? I don't know. Um we we actually just kind of jumped into oh, a conversation with you, so yeah, we, no, it's good. They're <laughs> taking on, ready to stream that. Uh, I know these two, so you can't yeah. tell them apart most of the time. But uh, they play exactly the same. But they're really, really, really nice guys. Also on the head pro team. Okay, uh, so that's why they kind of look familiar. All right, <laughs> uh, which is uh, David Seckel and Will Wilson. Okay, so yeah, they're very, very good players. Um, very underrated, I would yeah. say, as well. So. Let's talk about head a little bit because you are a head sponsored player, correct? Yeah, 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 I'm on their pro team, which is cool. fantastic. Uh, I use the Extreme Light, which just came out, so I'm a big fan of that paddle. Yeah, um, just for the core stabilizing technology, so that if you hit anything on the sides, it uh, has a lot more forgiveness and response and a lot of touch and feel to it. So, okay, kind of a thin, thinner beam, so that way you can really feel the ball. All right, yeah, big fan of that. Still go, uh, graphite too. So yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah I still get a lot of power off of it, but yeah, yeah, it's, and being with with heads been. Nothing but positive. It's amazing. You know what I mean? They're, it's a big company, obviously. And, mm -hmm. and uh, not that many pro players. Are, you know, we're growing as much as possible. And you have Sarah, yeah. obviously, uh, Ansbury, uh, you mm -hmm. know, representing uh, the Extreme Tour. And, yeah, Eric Lang and uh, David and, and Will. So, yeah, good times. That's awesome, man. Very nice. Yeah. Glad you can join us here, man. Uh, oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's uh, Johnny Pickleball Show, Southwest Florida Pickleball Academy. Anything else going on in your world? Uh, that's every Friday night, okay. 4.30 to 7, live streamed on the uh, Southwest Florida Pickleball Academy Facebook page uh, mm -hmm. for now. Okay. You know, maybe some other things happening in the future. We'll see. We'll see. All right. All right. But, um, 
Yeah, just going to do some singles practice here pretty soon to get ready for tomorrow. Okay. Nothing too much, but okay. uh, I will end up doing some singles practice. So. I got a question for you, Johnny. Yeah, absolutely. Are you a fan of giveaways? And oh, like, absolutely. Oh, uh, we actually have a pretty epic giveaway going on today. Yeah, we do. Um, do you think now would be a good time to reveal just what like, kind of things we're going to be giving away? Why don't like, we talk a little bit about yeah. the things that we're going to be giving away today here? Uh, these are going to be happening throughout the matches through the rest of the day. And I'm going to awkwardly reach over here and grab uh, a couple of them. <laughs> it's stuck. Yeah, so Eddie, he's reaching for, he's just trying to build drama here. Yeah, he's reaching nice. for the uh, the items that we're going to be giving away. But these are absolutely epic. Why don't you talk about it as I show the camera? All right, so what it is, we have not one, but two pickleballs. And each one oh, nice. is filled with autographs of some of the top pros, most of the top pros in pickleball. Can you believe that? Names such as Annalie Waters. Very nice. Dave Weinbach, mm -hmm. Adam Stone, and I could just go on for... Tyson McGuffin. Yeah. yeah. Just so, so many names on there. So many names. But they all just recently signed them during this tournament. They signed these pickleballs, mm -hmm. so we're going to be giving one of these away yes. to, a, a lucky, uh, Very nice. to a lucky yeah. person. And these are going to be happening later on through Pro Pickleball. Yep. So make sure that you continue to share these because that's going to be part of the criteria for being able to win these. Yes. We actually have a couple others, though, don't we? We that's do. Really cool. We actually have, we have three other things that are up for grabs that we're going to be giving away at some point today. And, uh, Eddie, why don't you reveal it and talk about it? So we have an autographed Paddletech Saber Pro. And if you can see here, it's signed by Scott Moore. Check that out. Very nice. I, actually, this paddle feels very nice in my hand. The long extended handle. I kind of like that. But this is, if I had this paddle, this would not be one that I'd want to play with. I'd want to like no. put it on the shelf. Yes, and, that would be uh, that would right? be hung up on the shelf for yes. sure. So you'll have a chance to win this. I mean, if you want to play with it, go for it. I don't recommend playing. Right. Not, yeah, not exactly. the autographed one. Not the autographed yeah. one. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then here, uh, this is, wow. I mean, you got to love this paddle here. It's a Bantam EXL. It's what I used to play with. But it's also signed by the one and only Irina Tarashenko. Oh, Check that man. out. That is That's awesome. That's pretty rare. How'd you get her to do that? I mean, That's we, pretty good. you know. We're Eddie and Webby, yeah, so I know, it's like, right? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah like, we, we I, I, I wish we had something to do with it, but we didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, somebody said, hey, uh, use these as things to give away. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much, yeah. They got that. And let's go over the last prize here, and this is, man, this is this is pretty cool. Here. Very cool. We have the Badger Paddle signed <laughs> by the Badger, Dave Weinbach. Check that out. Oh, man. Can you believe we're going to be giving these away? Do we have to give these away? Can we just keep them? I think we can just keep them. <laughs> do you think? Do you think they'll be mad at us? We'll just say some lucky people won them, and they'll, yeah, we can just take them home. We can just take we? them home, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'll yeah. do the drawing, and that, so you guys will win everything. All right, there we go. Actually, all we have to do is share a lot of these pro pickleball videos, and then we're in the running. So yeah. we could technically win. Yeah, I'm going to share the heck out of the uh, pro pickleball streams that are going on all day today because there are multiple matches. It's not just what we're streaming. Right. There are people all over the place streaming, and uh, the way you see them is on the pro pickleball Facebook channel. It's pretty amazing what Carl's been able to do with pro pickleball. We're at these tournaments. He gets the people that love to stream and basically are able to get them to go through one consolidated platform to where you guys can see all of these top matches at any time that they're being played through the pro pickleball Facebook page. So big shout out to Carl for that awesome stuff he's doing. Yeah, very cool. Very yeah. cool stuff. Um, anything else, Johnny? How can people uh, follow you? You're on Instagram, right? Absolutely. So okay. You can always follow me at Johnny underscore Pickleball if you'd like to. I'm on there, obviously. So uh, that's the only one that I really do mostly. I've, I haven't had a Facebook in forever. I'll probably end up doing that eventually just because of the requests that are coming in for it. But um, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm sure that's in the works. P pickleball <laughs> people love their Facebook. I know. Yes. They <laughs> love their Facebook, man. Yeah. So. so I'll probably get involved with that. But again, thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of man, course, thanks man. for being here. That was I, awesome. I have a feeling, uh, I have a feeling we're going to be maybe having you on again sometime in the next couple months. Would that be? Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. That'd so cool, whenever man. you're in Florida. Uh, Webby, let me know, man. Yeah, definitely. And you can stay with Eddie. You know yeah, I mean? that's right. Yeah, <laughs> we're right down the road from East Naples, five miles down the road from uh, from Very East Naples nice. Community yeah, we'll Park. There, so. yes. Oh yeah, man, I can't wait. And definitely, if you guys do the thing against Ben, um, let me know. Okay, that's, that's, that's good stuff. Nice, okay. man. You want to be our coach? You can be like on the sidelines. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I'll, I'll Perfect. coach you through that one if you. Yes. Yeah. Nice. I'm I love sure it. he'll have Colin. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's fine. 
But I, I got you. Okay. But we, we'll have Johnny Pickleball. Yeah, we have Johnny corner. Pickleball. It's yeah. very nice. Yep. Yeah, so we will definitely take you up on He that. doesn't really do look away. He just smiles. <laughs> okay. you know, so you'll be all right. Awesome, Solid, guys. Man. Thank you. Thanks, Johnny. Nice, thank you. Man, another great experience here on the podcast during the Bear City Open. Uh, Johnny Pickleball, he was, he was awesome. Very insightful, very knowledgeable during the match that he commentated with us. And then when he joined us for the, uh, for the podcast for a little interview, uh, that was great, man. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, think about the whole experience we had at the Beer City Open. We got to do three episodes of a podcast from a live stream at the Perrin pre-party. We got to live stream and commentate on, I don't even know how many matches, 20 some matches, my guess would be. I, you know, this is just, it's been absolutely amazing. And on top of that, be able to have guests like Martina Coakley and Johnny Pickleball come and sit with us and just want to talk and hang out. Yeah, I mean, how cool is that, man? I mean, we were just there hanging out courtside on the main court the whole entire weekend watching amazing games, watching uh, just like a whole gold medal after gold medal match and having some of the top pros join us to do commentary and then have some of the top pros join us on the podcast. I mean, <laughs> what an incredible weekend. It was amazing. Yeah, that is a weekend that I'm never going to forget. Uh, yeah. I definitely think we need to give another huge shout out to all the volunteers at the Beer City Open, the tournament directors, Andrea Coop, uh, Paul Richards, Jeff Howlett, and th there's a ton of other people uh, that I saw working their butts off the entire weekend. Tom Miller, Nicole Miller, uh, Matt Loria. I mean, you guys were all busting your butts to make that event go as smoothly as possible. And let me oh, tell yeah. you something. All of your efforts were, were, you know, they led to an amazing event. That's for sure. Yeah, it was incredible. And I just, I heard nothing but great things from everybody. Uh, the top pros just couldn't get enough. Like they, they just couldn't say enough good things about this tournament. And they're all, they all said they're definitely coming back next year. And uh, I, I definitely see why it's, it's absolutely incredible. Absolutely amazing. Uh, the, the time of my life. Absolutely. 100%. And guys, guess what? That was episode number 46, which means there's 46 of you still out there right now. And we appreciate every single one of you. You know who you are. Oh, yeah. And on that note, I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, is signing off. See ya.